Hey, everybody. We are here mm-hmm. to do a follow-up of last week's episode, which if you didn't check, if you didn't see it, sorry, mm-hmm. stuttering like a fool. If you didn't see it, we talked about sequels that we never got, that we never received, that we should have had. And then this week, we are going to be talking about sequels that no yeah, one asked for. We're Actually, going on the other side of things. Yeah. And uh, let me fix the typing there because apparently I don't know how to spell. I don't either. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what we're talking about today. And uh, we thought it was fitting to have this sequel to this topic to follow up this week. And it, the things we're going to talk about today, once again, uh, we don't know uh, each other's list, but I do got a feeling, just got a feeling that uh, – we got some of the same ones on here, so I can't wait to see. But it does pain me the movies we're going to talk about today mm-hmm. and the ones we didn't get last week. But these movies exist for whatever reason. <laughs> yes. And uh, so we get to get on here, have some fun, because we'll be making fun of these movies and talking about why they shouldn't exist. And so we are excited to do so. But of course, first of all, thanks for joining us, everyone. We are glad you're here. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit the like button. Turn on the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos of your favorite real pastors and all of our wonderful topics and things that we have going on. So please make sure you go ahead and do that right now. Yeah. Please hit subscribe. Come on. You know you want to. So here we go. Going into the sequels that no one asked for. So, Gary, I think I started off last week, so you will have the honors of starting your game. All right, and I got I got posters ready this time. Yeah. So remember how to do it. <laughs> Share screen. And here we go. Boom. <laughs> you knew it was going to be there. Yep. Um, I got it, too. Okay. So, so I guess we should both just rip into this, but you first, sir. I mean, uh, we've talked about it before. Uh, this was not I mean, this was not the Batman movie anyone asked for. Um, I used to blame Joel Schumacher, but he I more blame Warner Brothers now. Uh, George Clooney, just completely, uh, honestly, just uh, an atrocious performance as Batman, mm-hmm. and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger directing a, a choir singing "Mr. Ice Christmas." It, it is so bad. Bat nipples. Um, Bat Visa. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, never leaves the cave without it. Um, Chris O'Donnell, who's a respectable actor, I mean, that's the thing. I don't understand. I mean, it doesn't make sense because this is a top notch cast, you know? Mm-hmm. We got Clueless herself, Alicia Silverstone, this Bat Girl, Bat Woman, whatever. You know, Joel Schumacher is a solid director. Thank you for Lost Boys, a Time to Kill Phone Booth. But we got this, just a campy, and some people consider it a guilty pleasure. I don't. I just think it is just complete garbage. Um, nothing about this movie is good. No, I agree. It is on my list as well. This is the one of the most giant pieces of crap I've ever seen. I think probably the only Batman movie worse than this is the Adam West Batman movie. Um, and and But that one was already campy. They just went it's, over the top. But this one, yeah. it was like... Here's what gets me. You have a very serious take with some humor in Batman and Batman Returns. Batman Forever tried to add a little bit of the campy, but I feel like they were a little bit more restraint. And I think yeah. that's why I actually own that movie and I can put up with that movie. Um, they had a little bit more restraint. They still want to keep what Tim Burton had. But then this one just went completely off the rails. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like, like seriously, to the point to where I refuse to watch any movie with George Clooney because – he was so awful in this, and he ruined Batman, one of my favorite heroes, that I just said, I can't respect him as an actor. So I, I haven't watched a single movie with him in it ever since. Well, um, you can't see it. You can't. You know? And yeah. he's made some great movies. And I, I just, yeah, you can't. I just see Hello Freeze on Batman. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And, and the difference between this one and Batman Forever, and I don't, I don't like Batman Forever. Mm-hmm. However, Batman Forever was not a franchise killer. This was a right. franchise killer. This this came out what ninety seven. I remember. I yeah, so. I was I was in my second round of second grade. You heard me right. And uh, and this came out and uh, whew, man, 
Yeah, and it was terrible. And, you know, God bless Uma Thurman. She tried her best to carry this movie. Um, Great honestly, actor. Yeah, honestly, I think she was the best part of this entire movie. And like you said, great actress. She tried her best to carry it, but Uma Thurman, there's nothing you could do to save this. Absolutely and, nothing. Bang. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. I mean, it just the script is terrible. The, the thought behind it's terrible. I yeah. mean, just the premise, the story is absolutely ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. just, just the stuff that they do is it just didn't make any sense. And if you're going to bring in someone like Mr. Freeze, who's such a respected villain, mm -hmm. like, and to do that to him, like, such disrespect. I mean, animated series did it right. Listen, if you mm -hmm. want to see Mr. Freeze done right, just go watch the animated series. Because well, that's the Batman done right. And anyway, yeah. I mean, just, and anyway, yeah, just actually just go watch the animated series, forget this yeah. movie exists. I, I will say, um, when you watch the making of this movie and you kind of you get the vision that Warner Brothers had, you understand why we got it the way we did. But it just no one wanted this yeah. except for the Warner Brothers, they wanted and even Joel Schumacher, he's he apologizes in the documentary, it's on the Blu ray, and he says, If I offended anyone, I'm sorry, but they told me to make a cartoon. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, it was it's bad. It's yeah, it is uh, oh, even George Clooney has apologized for his yeah. involvement in this as well. Yeah, you know, and it, but it just like it is. It's they try to just make a live action cartoon, which you know what that doesn't always work. Uh -huh. I mean, Rocky and Bullwinkle is a great example of trying to make a cartoon Ooh. live action. It just doesn't work. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Yeah, but that wasn't a sequel. That was just a bad one-off movie. Yeah, bad one -off, but yeah, yeah, this uh, – yeah. And we didn't get a third Tim Burton, Michael Keaton movie, but we got this one. Yeah, anyway. I, I don't want to get more upset. I, we got to move on. <laughs> yeah, we, we got we to move on here. So. Yeah. So I'm anxious to see what you have next. Yeah, so since he brought that one up, that was one of mine. So we already talked about that one. So I got to pull up a different one here. And let's see. Oh, okay. Here we go. So I'm just pulling this up. And here's the thing, Gary. Oh. Pirates of the Caribbean 1 through 3, I enjoyed. I liked the first three. The fourth and the fifth should have – they were just cash grabs. The story was stupid. The only thing you had continuing through was Johnny Depp and Jeffrey Rush, who, again, two great actors. But you could just tell they were mailing it in at this point. Um, they did not care. Uh, so the acting, the story, everything was just absolutely preposterous. And it just, I mean, I know the first three, the first one was really good. The second one was pretty good. Third one went a little wonky, but it's still, you know, it at least finished the story. And it should have ended right there. No one asked for the Pirates of the Caribbean to be beyond, uh, you know, a trilogy. No one asked for this. They just said, hey, you, this, these movies made a lot of money. Here's another one. Oh, it didn't make as much, but here's another one. It's like, why? Why are we still making these movies? And as you can tell, I'm passionate because I enjoy the first three. Mm -hmm. And I'm very upset that they just made a mockery of this franchise by adding the last two. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So I blind bought the fourth one because I love the first three so much. Especially the first one. I love the first one. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, I, I didn't see it in theater. It's like, I'll, 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 of course I'll like it. And I remember being so upset. And I disliked the fourth one so much. Well, I sold it. And I never even saw the fifth one. Yep. Um, it was, yeah, yeah, the fourth, it was just, ugh. Yeah, I think the fifth one in like some record pace ended up being on TV. So I was like, eh, I'll just watch it. It's on TV. I got nothing else to do. <laughs> And oh my gosh, it was hard. Like I seriously watched half of it. And I had to turn it off. It was so terrible. Wow. And, like it was just absolutely terrible. And I, and I'm just like, oh no wonder you didn't make any move any money on this Disney. Like yeah. this is what happens when you have no heart in your story. You're just trying to make <laughs> money. Like, just yeah. come on. You know, it was. I mean, like I said, like Johnny Depp. It seriously looked like he just. Like I seriously think he was drunk. I don't think he was acting. <laughs> I think I, like, I feel like he was drunk while he was making this, these movies. It was just – and Jeffrey Rush, amazing actor. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, he did his – he was like Uma Thurman. He did his best to carry this thing. But at the same time, it's like you, you, it, a pile of crap's a pile of crap. There's nothing you can do with it. Yeah. I mean, if you need a fourth and a fifth movie in a story, okay, fine. But this is a prime example of quit when you're ahead. 
Mm-hmm. Just be done. Yep. Yeah. Just be done. So that one. There you go. All right. So let's see here. And I know you guys are thinking, man, these guys are getting passionate. These things make us angry, people. Yeah. We, and it goes back to last week because it's things that we uh, – sorry. I. Uh, there we go. Mm, I knew I knew you were going to have this one on there. <laughs> yeah. This movie should not exist. It, it's bad. <laughs> and – the first speed is an action classic. Mm-hmm. Um, Keanu Reeves, Sandra Bullock, in my opinion, you know, her best role. We've touched on her a little bit. She's a little bit of an overrated actress, but she's great in speed. Dennis Hopper, Jeff Daniels. And then we get this piece of trash, uh, you know, a boat. You just can't, I mean, it, like, yeah, I mean, it's a cruise ship. I mean, yeah. when you think of speed, things going fast, you think of a Carnival Cruise Line. <laughs> And, you know, uh, William Defoe is the villain. And some reason, he has a bathtub full of slugs. It doesn't make any sense. And he's mad at the boat. And Jason Patrick, who's as bland as you can get, uh, yeah. you know, he's not Keanu Reeves. Many stretch of imagination. William Defoe, love him. But it just, I mean, he, we didn't get William Defoe as the Joker, but we got him as Slug Man on season <laughs> two. Uh, yeah, it's uh, such a bad movie, and the, the ending when it, when the, it's just so bad. It I'm bad. sorry, I'm dying because I just I just know it. everything you say is so true, yeah. and I'm just dying laughing because that's the only response I have to this movie. Is yeah, just laughing. I mean, it's, it's just like, and and then you get the first speed, oh, and it's it's a great action movie, and it's got a great ending. It's got I love the scene on the train, and it's just like. And it ends, and you're like, okay, good. No one's like, oh, yeah, I'd like to see another one of that. No, like, is it? Just make it speed two. Yeah. Cruise control. Yeah. Another right. example of executive saying, I think we can make more money off this. Yeah, we're gonna, it's, this time we're going to hit the water. And when you think yeah. of going fast, you think of cruise control. <laughs> it's just like, it doesn't make any sense. This movie is nonsense and not in a good way. And it's not even fun. Uh, you know? That poster is lying. That was not two thumbs up. Yeah, I, I don't know who found, gave it. Yeah, I don't know who gave found, it two thumbs up. They yeah, found the right. one guy who was like, oh, that was fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who, who's, uh, I wish I could see the name on the bottom, but. Oh, uh, I know. But it's like, it's like we got to find someone who liked this thing. And if you're watching them. this, go to YouTube and just watch. You probably found the clip when the, 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 the cruise ship. It's crashing into a town, and mm-hmm. it just they can't slow it down. It just slowly crashes to a town, and it's just like, yeah. all right. It's just, yeah. yeah. Nobody wanted this movie, and we got it. But, Wait, yeah, five knots. I don't know yeah, how I can't remember. Yeah. Me, me and my Aunt Sherry, one of our loyal viewers, we all will randomly go, six knots. This, 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 <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah. So, very bad yeah. sequel. Very bad sequel. Uh, so, and uh, it's so, so bad. Keanu Reeves wouldn't even come back for it you yeah know? it tells and, you all you need to know yeah because so. he wants to come back he comes back for sequels bill and yeah Ted. yeah he's on his like good. ninth john wick movie you know but I know. speed on a boat no thank you bad yeah bad bad, 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 bad idea bad so all right yeah so continue on here so that's is you know what gary i knew you would have that one on there so i didn't put it on my list <laughs> Because I was like, yeah. I know he'll have that one on there. Yeah, and we so, know each other too well. I know, it's so true. Now, the thing is, like, the next two I'll bring up because I have one I'm saving for the end. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see if you also have these on here. Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do this one first. And Independence Day resurgence, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, I knew you were gonna have this one. Okay. Um. And I wasn't going to put it on there because I never even took time to see it. So I was going to let you have at it. Listen, I'm so glad you did not see this one. I know it'll give you hard yeah. times for others, but thank the Lord you did not watch this one. This one is – like, here's the thing. Of course, no one, no one ever asked for this movie because everyone loved the first one so much. It was so great. And it was just like, just let it be. But here's the thing that, that they got people like me sucked in is they sucked me in. 
on an interesting premise that they that literally was used just for the opening scene and that's it and the premise of you know we had 20 years to prepare we knew they were coming back and we've used the alien technology to you know to 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 progress the world right and it's like okay this is cool and then you know so we're thinking they may be coming back maybe we'll see some of the war that's going to be happening of of aliens that may have survived the crashes from the first one or whatever no none of it you can see none of the cool stuff there's even a section where they're in africa one of the countries in africa and these guys are like they have like alien heads on post you know like on spears and they and they talk about how like there were these great wars between the people of africa and these countries and against the aliens for the battle of of the land and i'm like oh that sounds amazing do we get any of that any flashbacks no nothing so this movie just said here are all these really cool ideas and premises but we're just going to ignore it all just so you can watch these guys will and will smith's son and and uh thor's little brother argue about the past and some girl we're going to give you that instead oh and then by the way at the very end here's a queen alien that's going to destroy everything mm. like and then jeff goblin literally all he did was like world hop to be like huh okay okay uh yeah 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 okay oh they're back okay let's figure out how to kill him this time because they needed someone smart to kill him right and it was just it was just absolutely stupid you know his uh his dad, Jeff Goldblum's dad in this movie, you know, the, or the character's dad. I have no idea why he's in this movie. None whatsoever. <laughs> and on HBO to call you. Yeah, I, it just it's just terrible. And then and then uh, and then they did the same thing in this that they did with MIB International, which isn't on my list, but also a terrible sequel no one asked for. But um but they did the same thing to Will Smith as that. They put him as a picture on the wall. Just so we can be like, there he is. Remember him? Yeah, you gonna do the Fresh Prince that way. Gosh, man. Just yeah. this movie, no one asked for it, but then they promised a cool premise, got our hopes up, and then just literally crashed that alien ship into the ground. It was absolutely terrible. I had people in my life, I won't name names, uh, who I who notoriously like bad movies, mm. tell me that this movie was awful. And I was like, yeah, I'm staying away. And... And honestly, I when I found out Will Smith wasn't in it, I was like, I'm not interested. You know, yeah. uh, I think it was he was making Suicide Squad, and he couldn't do this. And uh, and, and let me just tell you, you wait for Will Smith. Mm-hmm. You know, and his character in the original, we've talked about the original, is a big part of my childhood. And uh, yeah, you want to see that character back, and he's not being brought back. I'm no, nope, I'm good. No, you instead, know. you instead you kill him off off screen. Yeah, like, no. mm-hmm. that's no. always so lazy. Such yeah, lazy writing, lazy. and that yeah. and that's really what it comes down to with this movie. It is absolute lazy writing, and I think we can say this about most of it. It's just lazy writing, cash grabs. That's all yeah. it is. And that's it, what. And it, yeah. Go, that's what it, usually it just, falls down to. Yeah, and it was, and it was just like it was just lazy. There was no further character development. They just tried to bring back as many characters as possible that we loved. And they were like, oh, look, they're here. Now we're kind of giving them something to do. Oh, here's some cool special effects. Here's some banter of new characters. And, you know, and, then, and then they had the audacity, Gary. They had the audacity to try to end this in a way where they could make a third movie. Yeah. I don't you it. assume, don't you dare assume that the audience are going to be okay with the garbage you just gave us. Yeah. Didn't they bring back Bill Pullman in this? Isn't he in this? Yeah. He's That's like, what I'm saying. Yeah. They brought back everyone but Will Smith. Yeah, and and it just and listen. Will Smith, I mean, the the script was trash, and you know, in Suicide Squad, obviously he had two turds to deal with. But yeah. like, <laughs> but if they would have waited for him, maybe there would have been something to salvage. But I don't yeah. know, man. It was it was just bad. Like this is, this is definitely a one on the Hail Mary scale. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Well, it's a shame that they didn't make a proper sequel to. Yeah. To that amazing Independence Day didn't need a sequel, but if you're gonna do it, do it right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see where we at here. Let's see. There we go. There's my next one. Boom on my list as well. I knew yeah. that one would be. I figured it would be. I figured it would yep. be. Uh, I mean, the Terminator franchise. I could go on for hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terminator Three shouldn't exist. It's not that bad, but 
Terminator 2 wrapped everything up. There's a reason why James Cameron didn't come back because he told his story. And, you know, he just needed the two movies. And this, you talk about convoluted. You talk about, and, and this, this movie, it, 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 tr- it got me because it had an interesting premise, kind of like we were saying about Independence Day resurgence or revenge or whatever it was called. Um, this had an interesting premise going back to the original and tra- changing everything. And then even got the endorsement from James Cameron saying it was the best since two. And I was, I don't know how much they paid him to, to say that. And this starts and I don't want to spoil anything, but I will, whatever this starts the, the trend that happened with the one they made after this of ruining the character of John Connor. Um, and then it's just convoluted. It's a mess. It makes no sense. And it's just really bad. Yeah. And, yeah interesting premise. I mean, Arnold's great in it. You know, JK Simmons has a small role and he's awesome. You know, Amelia Clark was pretty good. I was not, I've never been into, uh, the other guy that was in this movie. What's his name? Um, Okay, based um, John Connor? No. The other, the other guy. Um, yeah, I don't remember his name either. Honestly, after this, I hadn't seen him in much of anything, so I wonder if it could Yeah, be. he was in Suicide Squad as well. But anyway. That's right. Is he Jai Courtney? Is that who it is? Yeah, yeah. Jai, they, Hollywood's been trying to make Jai Courtney a thing for a long time. He yeah. played uh, Kyle Reese, didn't he, in this, I think? Yep. And yep. it's just – it's got some cool shots, but it's just not a good movie. Yeah. And, I mean, even the guy who plays John, John Connor is, like, a pretty good actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just, it makes no sense. Makes yeah, and like I said, this was on my list, so let me go ahead and jump in here too. Like, like, like you said, the third one, you know, shouldn't exist, but it wasn't like that bad. You know, it has a stupid moments. Honestly, Terminator Salvation. Personally, I enjoyed it. I mean, I it, it's hard because to me, it's mm-hmm. like it didn't really feel like a Terminator movie. Yeah, but but the story they told was interesting enough that we're like, oh, okay. Just because I like that they actually. Yeah. went to the future and showed hey here's the world that t2 was saying is going to happen and these humans are trying to survive mm-hmm. you know so i just like that yeah. aspect i guess that's what i really liked about it but he like this bell who does it you know he's awesome and everything yeah and they had uh, uh what's his name who was the 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 sam, robot sam worthington sam worthington yeah so like i feel like those two really made it watchable and then like i said the premise of the story of where it was at was actually pretty interesting it didn't feel like a normal Terminator movie, but it, it's almost like if you just take the word Terminator out and just have like its own, it, it was a standalone movie. I think it probably would have been better because mm-hmm. um, I thought it was pretty good. But then, but then I remember after that being like, okay, like there's not, there's no more stories to tell here. Mm-hmm. And then they bring this out and then they even spoil the ending in the trailer. Yeah. Like they show you everything. Mm-hmm. So it was like, there was no reason to go to the movie. The only reason why I went is because my friends like, come on, man. Like, can you just come with me? I just want to go see it. And like, and I was like, <laughs> all right, I'll go. And then oh, I was so angry when I got out of that theater. <sighs> yeah. It's... And like you said, just, just spitting in the face of what came before it mm-hmm. and, spit, and spitting on the character, spitting on the lore. It was just, it was just completely a disrespectful movie and it was just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And with stuff like Terminator, you you can't keep going back to the well. The only story left to tell was like with Salvation, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But the more you went back to the well, the more convoluted it would get, and the more it just would not make sense, you know. And uh, Terminator Two, in my opinion, is probably well is the greatest sci-fi action movie of all time. It is just mm-hmm. it's an absolute masterpiece, and and then you just it's followed up with just nonsense, <laughs> you know. Yeah, Man, I call this Terminator nonsense. Yeah, I will say this: I at least appreciate T three and Salvation. I at least appreciate their effort uh-huh. to to expand on yes. the two that came before it and to like do it justice. I at yeah. least respect that about those two, which uh-huh. to me they're watchable. And if you want to include those in the franchise, yeah. you yeah. know, fine. You know, but th- this one, forget it. You know, like mm-hmm. this. This should this should have never been made. No one asked for it. It should it should just it shouldn't exist. Yeah, and it's a shame because it's a great. I mean, it, it just but we got to be. And then I didn't even bother seeing Dark Fate after I heard what happens in the beginning of that movie, and I was just like, yeah, I'm not watching that. Yeah, I mean, even the trailers, you could tell 
they were going to do something stupid. And I remember you telling me what it was because you're like, are you going to watch? It? I was like, not a chance. Not that. Not after this movie that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, right they're not getting me again. Yeah. Like, oh, you're not getting me again. So the, you yeah. told me, and I was like, yep. See, I knew it. I knew there was no reason for me to go. Yep. So, in my mind, as watchable as T3 and Salvation are, I will agree with that. But this franchise ended with the thumbs up of Arnold going into the water or the water, the, the fire, lava. lava. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. No, yeah. which is completely understandable, and honestly, that's where the franchise should have ended, anyways. Mm-hmm. You know, they were going to do extra stuff. Just keep it to the video games because those are those are pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 So the T2 video game was pretty fantastic on Sega Genesis. I will, I will say, I think I remember playing that. I think I do. Oh man. It's so good. So, but then again, T2 video game. Amazing. Like we don't need anything else beyond that. Yeah. Uh, I know. And the thing is, it's funny because we're just going over a few, a few that we know of that we really despise, but there are so many out there and you think Hollywood would learn its lesson. Yeah. Like you really think they would. Hello, Cash. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Cash makes his debut on the show. Say hello to the folks. Okay. No? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, like I said, I had Terminator on there. Now, this one, honestly, Gary, I'm jumping a little bit ahead, but I think you'll respect my decision here. And <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ain't, nobody, ain't nobody want that movie. I haven't even seen it, but the huh. trailer looks stupid, and nobody yeah. asked for this. Nobody yeah. watched this movie. Well, I take that back. Probably, Michael, if you're watching, I'm sure you would because you're a LeBron homer. <laughs> but, you know, hope we don't lose a viewer. But, Michael, I re- you know, love you, man. But, no. <laughs> no right? This should not yeah. exist. I, I, like, when I heard about it, I remember thinking two things I thought. One, when I first heard this was going to happen, I was like, I was like, okay, I mean, I guess I'll give it a chance because if they at least make the Looney Tunes funny, it'll probably be watchable. You know, so I was like, I'll give it a chance. But the second thought I had was, you really are trying everything you can to upstage Michael. And, dude, just if anything, you should have done something different, not Space Jam, if you want to upstage. Yeah. Like, don't try to follow it up like that, man. Like, uh, and, and just, and then when I saw the trailer, I got all the more angry because it just looks, it, it literally, the, the trailer made me think, so you're taking Space Jam and Tron. And putting them together. Yeah. That that's what we're doing here. It's like, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> yeah. It, when you when you say sequels no one asked for, that this yeah. I mean I yeah, I just mm, I'm good. Yeah. And you know, I'm trying not to sound like old man, you know, like but and you know, I'm not I'm not the biggest LeBron fan, especially these days, you know, but I'm trying not to make it about LeBron hate, be a LeBron hater, but it's just this is just not necessary at all. No. Yeah. No. Not at all. I will say this, though. If I'm going to be positive, <laughs> I like that Space Jam, that Toon Squad uniform. I do I do like that. You yeah, know, I see it not- now. It's got the, the Looney Tune logo on the side. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, it's not the classic. But, you know, it's not bad. I think it looks pretty cool. But, mm-hmm. but again, it's just like, dude, like if you want to – it's because to me, I'm just the person like – if you're someone like LeBron, you want to, you know, make your name and all this kind of stuff, then then make a, your own movie. Like, mm-hmm. don't don't try to piggyback on the greatness of Michael if you want to surpass him. I mean, yeah. come on, like, don't don't do that. And and the first and this first Space Jam, it is just such a classic. Mm-hmm. For it, 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 this was what's the word? It was just such a cultural phenomenon, mm-hmm. you know. Because when you look at it as a movie, Space Jam as a movie and character development and story, it, it's pretty weak. All right, it's pretty straightforward. Well, I, I, I think it's a documentary, to be honest with you. It, it really is more of a documentary than anything, just with some fun. Yeah. But uh, but uh, yeah. but the thing is, it's like they did it. Michael was was hot. He was the, he was the man, and someone came up with an idea and said, "Michael, will you do this?" And he's like, "Yeah, let's do it." Yeah. yeah. When you, you also had that amazing album behind it, you know? Yeah. Quad City DJs, R. Kelly before, you know, he was whatever he is now. I believe I can fly, you know? Mm-hmm. It's great. I had, I got that for my birthday when he was a great album. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, and it was just, it was Bugs Bunny, Looney Tunes, and Michael Jordan. And this is just trying to be, you can just tell, it's just trying to be way, way too over the top, mm-hmm. you know? Um, 
But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm good on this. I don't I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, and I know people might be like, "Wow, you're judging it before you even see it." But it's just like I'm trying to get ahead of the game here. Instead of saying, "I wish this never," like I wish this never happened. I'm saying it now. If there's any chance to stop it in its tracks, yeah. let's do that. Yeah. So, oh, buzzing's <laughs> happening, sir. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I, I just want to let you know. But anyways, yeah. you know, like it's like, no, like stop it now. Stop Listen, it. If COVID can kill any mo- movie, please kill this one. <laughs> like just stop it in its tracks. Yeah. Yeah. It is not needed. And I will say is like, you know, like LeBron focus on like he's got a movie coming out from his what's it called it Braun Studios or whatever, yeah. with Kevin Hart called Fatherhood. It looks really really good. I watched the trailer the other day. It's like, make more stuff like that. They don't give us another Space Jam. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and he had an he had another one with uh, Forrest Whitaker, where he yeah. was a where he was a, a minister and stuff. And that one looked good. And that that one you know Braun's in on that one. So it's mm-hmm. like, dude, just keep like make your legacy elsewhere. Don't do it with Space Jam. Yeah, I mean, no, no. Listen, even if they try to do Space Jam with Steph Curry, I would still be like, no. Oh yeah, yeah. This is yeah. We don't need it. We don't need it. We just don't need a second Space Um, Jam. It doesn't need to happen with anybody. Oh gosh, you scared me. Sorry, my wife just got home. Just appeared in the doorway. Uh, Oh, that's yes. (sighs) All right. I thought I was. I thought I was being murdered. (laughs) (laughs) So poor guy. Anyway, yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Let's stop Space Jam. Hashtag <laughs> stop Space Jam. No new legacy. <laughs> yes. So, all right. So, let's see where we're going here. All right. Um, all right. There we go. Oh. Jocelyn. This time it's personal, man. <laughs> That shark follows Mrs. Brody all the way to the Caribbean. You know, shark I, I, I is for, out for revenge because you know, Chief Brody sharks they hold grudges. You know, for killing uh, family members, they are. And uh, you got a shark who not only holds a, a grudge for twenty some years, but it's going to go from the Martha's Vineyard area to the Caribbean, and, and, and uh, you know, to track down Mrs. Brody. It was a bad movie. <laughs> I forgot this movie existed. <laughs> yeah. This is it's, so it's, terrible. Yeah, it's bad. And we didn't need this at all. And, uh, uh, Can the I great Michael Caine, oh, go ahead. Sorry. What? The go great ahead, Michael Caine's in this movie. And, uh, that's right. And he's quoted as saying, I've never seen this movie, but I have seen the house that it built. So he talked about the money he made on it. But yeah, yeah. Jaws of Revenge is, is not only a really ridiculous premise, it's made really poorly. Uh, the shark growls apparently at one point um, when it jumps out of the water. And, uh, and here's the thing. Jaws 2 is not that great. Jaws 3 at SeaWorld, not that great. But they're watchable premises, premises, premise I. Um, yeah, th- this is, you know, when you talk bad sequels, sequels no one asked for, this, this is it, you know. This is oh, there. Yeah. It's personal. Yeah, and I was going to say, can I honorable mention piggyback on this, Jaws 3? Yeah. But, you know, you mentioned yeah. it, like, it was <laughs> too watchable, you know, a little silly, but at least they had the original cast for the, you know, and they uh-huh. tried to do something with it. The third one was just absolutely ridiculous. Uh-huh. And, you know, and then this one, oh my, just dreadful. Like, yeah. I don't even understand, like, who who greenlit this? Probably the same person who greenlit Sharknado is what Probably. I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> At least, like, with Sharknado, like, it knows it's supposed to be bad. This was trying yeah. to be, this was trying, like, to be, like, a legit, serious movie. Yeah. And, um, and the shark looks worse than the original Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> like it looks so bad. Yeah. It was just... Yeah. And yeah. then like and what was was it Michael Caine that was like that was telling her that this is because of your family versus his family kind of thing? I, I forgot the exact word. I only seen it yeah. once. I saw it years ago on TBS and I I don't yeah. I don't remember. I know I just, it 
comes after the youngest Brody son at the beginning, kills him, and then she um, goes on vacation to Jamaica or something, and mm -hmm. there's some type of voodoo connection, I believe. <laughs> yeah. So maybe it was a voodoo guy. I remember someone, like, they actually had time to write in, mm -hmm. oh, the shark is the ancestor of the original, and it's after mm -hmm. your family killing its family or something something along those lines. And I remember just thinking, are we serious? That's like, because someone... this time is personal. <laughs> I know. I'm like, did someone sit down with the shark and say, like, tell me about your problems? Yeah. Like, did it have a psychiatrist? <laughs> like, oh, it, would, it was uh, just so terrible. Why this movie exists. And, and you know what makes me even more mad, Gary, is that they had a Blu-ray set for all four of these movies. And I'm like, why? No, just thankfully they listened to me. And I said, how about just give us the original looking better? And then they gave us the 4K, thank God. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we're going to get a 4K still book of this. <laughs> I hope not. A yeah. car, it would just be like, you know, cardboard book, yeah. if anything. If you're going to make a Jaws sequel, here's always been my idea. Dive into the characters and deal with the issues that they had after what they went through on the Orca. You know what I mean? Like it's hinted here that Martin Brody, he had a heart attack. He died from a heart attack and he struggled with, you know, for with PTSD after what he went through. It's like, tell that story. You know, yeah. I know it's not shark attacks and all that, but it's interesting. It, you know, a lot more so, interesting in this garbage. Yeah. But yeah. So I had to, to my sequels, nobody wanted, I had to, I had to keep that on there. <laughs> and, and we and we continue talking about Jaws or Batman. So, and we got two I, in one. Oh, episode. Yep, there we go. There we go. Yeah, because it is. Oh gosh, that one was so bad, so bad. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I've got nothing else because I've piggybacked off of two of Gary's. I have one and, more. Oh, you have one more. Oh, my bad. Please, please, yeah. sir. Please. This might be controversial, but. I got to do it. No one asked for this movie. No one. And it was very unnecessary. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's genius above us. I thought about this and then I forgot. I'm glad you have it on yeah. your list. I mean, you you got a perfect trilogy there, Pixar. Perfect ending. Uh, I mean... 2009, 2010, 2010, I'm sitting in a theater with my Aunt Sherry, my wife-to-be, my cousin Josh, and we're watching Toy Story 3, and I'm just like, this is a perfect movie. And this, and then, and I'm not going to lie, I cried. When Andy drove off to college, you know, leaves his toys with Connie, and he says, so long part. I mean, it just, it, 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 it's a guy who grew up with these movies and these toys, it hit me, it was a perfect ending. And then they just go in to give us this, and... Not necessarily a bad movie, but a very unnecessary movie. And this this is the first movie I took my daughter to see in the theater, you know. I, and uh, so, you know, I guess it'll always be somewhat special because of that. However, it just – it didn't need to happen. It, it <clears throat> The reason why I didn't like it, for what reasons you just said, the third one ended. I remember when this was first announced, I, I, my, my first thing was why. Mm -hmm. I said, why? You had the perfect ending. You had the story of these toys who grew up with this boy, Andy. And, like, he's going off to college. And, like you said, either they're put away or some get given away. Like, what else do you need to tell? The, the, the name of the movie is called Toy Story. The yeah, story story's of, over. The story's over. Exactly. It's been told. And then I saw this, and I literally remember thinking, I don't know if I told you this or not, Gary, when it came out. But I was like, they're literally making a movie – just to get Bo Peep back in it. Like, that's really what it felt like. The whole movie is just to get Bo Peep back in the Toy Story. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then so we have this whole story, and they do this whole thing where, I mean, yeah, I guess, like, Woody would struggle with not being played with or whatever. <laughs> but it's like, but why does this story need to be told? It didn't. To just break him all up at, again at the end. It yeah. just makes no sense. The emotion that we had in the third one, when, when all the toys were... In, you know, in the dumped, accepting their fate, 
you know, but the heartstrings there, they get saved. The heartstrings with Andy at the end driving off and him just looking back and saying, thanks, guys. It hits you right there. Yeah, it was it beautiful. Was, yeah, it was. And, it, and, and then you do this and then you make a mockery. With, you know, my favorite Toy Story is Buzz. Toy Story character is Buzz. And they make a mockery of Buzz. They make him like this. Like, you know, he, he progresses. He goes from thinking he's a real spaceman to mm-hmm. coming to grips with that. And then he becomes smarter, becomes this really good ally with Woody. They become partners. And, you know, they're just these intelligent toys. And then he's, yeah. they, they drax him. You know, yeah. like, they do. turn they him do. into comedy relief and turn him into a buffoon yeah. and an idiot. And I'm like, come yeah. on, man. Yeah. You know, my favorite, <laughs> you know, my favorite Buzz Lightyear line is, is from Toy Story 3 when they rewire him. Mm-hmm. In the, and Ham is playing the harmonica, and he says, "Quiet, musical hog." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. we get Spanish word buzz from yeah, that. One. That was that was great. Uh, but uh, and then you know Woody, who for three movies talks about the importance of of your owner, your kid, being there, and he decides to go live on the streets with Bo, <laughs> basically saying it doesn't matter, you know, anymore. It's like. No, I can't wait till my brother-in-law Michael watches this episode because he has very strong opinions and he agrees with us on this movie. And uh, oh, yeah. it just this movie is just it doesn't need to exist. It didn't ask for no. it. Didn't get it. No one. No, so, like I, I leave. Yeah, but, hmm. yeah, listen, man. I do we have it? I don't know. I don't think I don't think we bought this one. Or if we did, maybe it was or maybe it was given. I don't know. But it just. Like you said, like they just took these characters and just kind of, okay, forget it. Like you said, he's – so now Woody changed to, okay, well, we're going to be here to help other toys find homes, and that's my new purpose. And it's just kind of like – but that's never been who he is. Yeah. Like, And then Bo Peep, you know, Bo Peep's like, you know, she's a street girl now. Like she, she's seen yeah. some stuff, you know, and it's just like – And you got these okay. freaky dolls in that store. Yeah. <laughs> I will say though, Keanu Reeves' character, I can't remember his name, is pretty hilarious in this. Yeah, no, something Kaboom. What is his yeah, name? Duke, Jack Duke Kaboom. Kaboom. Yeah, Duke Kaboom. Yeah, he was he, pretty hilarious. And he was hilarious. And then Michael and Michael Keek and Key, whatever. Uh, the Key, and Pell, yeah, Key and Pill. Yeah, and Pill. Yeah, they were pretty great. They were pretty hilarious in this. Yeah. Honestly, I would have rather just followed them and Duke Kaboom and called it a day. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, just, yeah. Just. Um, and even yeah. then, I, got, I wish they would have. If they would have at least had some kind of passing of the torch to like some new toys. Yep. You know, I think that probably would have gone over a little bit better. But mm-hmm. you know, this isn't a fix it episode, so sorry, Disney, you're not getting anything else out of me. No. Shouldn't have made this. Shouldn't have made this. Shouldn't have made it. So well, that's what we got for you guys. Comment below. Let us yes. know. Sequels what are, that you think are unnecessary. Yeah, what else did we did maybe not necessarily miss, but not on list that would be on your list? We would love to hear from you guys. Um, this is, you know, Hollywood. Listen yeah. to the fans, please. Mm-hmm. Let's just put this out there. Because you listen to the fans, we showed up to go see Sonic, the live yeah. action Sonic. We enjoyed it. And oh, you know yeah. what? And now you're making a sequel, and we're going to go watch it again because you listen to us. Listen to I us mean- on the. Oh, nice. Yeah, and listen to the fans. We want Encino Man too. It's got to <laughs> happen. Give Polly Shore his resurgence. You know, mm-hmm. Brandon Fraser needs work. We need it. Encino Man too. Make it happen. Yeah. So, quick question before we completely sign off to you, Sir Gary. In light of this episode, what is what is your concern for your for the Top Gun sequel? Uh, like I know you're excited. But what's your level of concern for it, knowing that this is what Hollywood does with sequels? I guess just that, that it, it'll it come across as just not an interesting story, um, you know, because you know me, I'm all about it's an interesting story. And uh, I think the idea of, of Maverick being, a you know, someone who's giving back and going and, you know, dealing with stuff he's been through, it can be an interesting story, but let's just hope they, they stick the landing, you know. Yep. So, I but. yeah, I know that's one thing. I know I don't care for Top Gun like you do. However, I am worried for you that they're going to Independence Day resurgence you. Mm, that yeah. they're going to give you a good premise in the trailers, 
and they completely yeah. drop the ball when you're in that theater. I, that's where I'm yeah. concerned for you, sir. I, I mean, that's – yeah. There's a story I'm, I'm hoping for, you know, him him dealing with getting older and not wanting to let go. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Cautiously optimistic that I am. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. Yeah. So, understandable. Again, everyone, thanks for joining us yeah. on, this, on this journey. Don't forget to subscribe, <laughs> turn on the bell, share, like, Ding. all that great stuff. Let us know in the comments your thoughts, what sequels we missed, like we said earlier. And then uh, be on the lookout for a video next week. We'll figure out what we're doing later. But we will see you next time, or if we have some movie news, we'll see you earlier. Movie news. Yep. All yep. right. All right. See you, everybody. Peace out, movie lovers.